The Fargoids are a race beyond the age of humanity and even the Guardians. Insectoid in makeup, their biology can be changed as new challenges arises, manipulation achieved via technological methods. Their exact age cannot be confirmed, but they have been around at least since the Guardian race wandered the stars millions of years ago. Although conjecture, they are thought to originate from ammonia-based worlds, as many encounters with Fargoid-related activities have happened around these types of stellar bodies. As to the nature of an ammonium-based ecosystem, their bodies by default are thought to be highly susceptible to extreme cold, and as such, this is a possible explanation to their sometimes extremely hostile nature. Encounters with this race are somewhat confusing, as they seem to exhibit two types of pattern behaviour. The first is an extreme hostility to human factors with facilities, ships and even worlds attacked for some unknown purpose. The second is an observational nature where ships that encounter them are shut down, scanned and left to go on their way. Their goals are ultimately unknown. Although they can be fairly hostile and it is more likely in some way that their motives are to the detriment of mankind, there is something more to this than meets the eye. Fargoids use genetic manipulation as a means to better themselves, so much so that their ships are thought to be grown and reared like humans of old would husband horses and other animals as a tool or food source. The Fargoids' mastery of the art of genetic altercation has given them the ability to make massive changes in their genetic makeup in mere generations, where a challenge would be faced to a group of them, a change in their genetic makeup would take place, such as stronger skin, internal heat sources and improved eyesight. The society is thought to have similarities to an ant or bee colony, with layers of different purpose members of their own race. Through methods unknown, they appear to have a hive mind, with some unknown figurehead guiding them. Illegal experimentation and torture via the Mycoid project reveals that the average drone is highly resilient to harm, able to operate as normal under extreme trauma. Spacebound, the Fargoid race have somehow managed to manipulate genetics to the point of the ability to grow living ships and other spacefaring tools to further their goals. The smallest of their vessels, labelled Scout, are small wolf pack vessels that operate for the sole purpose of combat. Using various weapons of an unconfirmed composition, they are capable of disabling ships many times their size when in number. The more common ship to be encountered by humanity is the Fargoid Interceptor, a ship similar in function to the larger multi-role vessels of the human race. Currently, there is five known variants, labelled the Cyclops, the Basilisk, the Medusa, the Hydra and the Orthrus. The first four variants appear to be for combat, all have the same weapon types but at varying strengths. However, one such vessel that almost nothing is known about is the Orthrus. The only known encounter of this vessel was at the Palin Research Institute, itself being attacked by Fargoid Scout in a mysterious encounter. The origin of the Fargoids is unknown, as is their exact age. What is known is that they have been a spacefaring civilization for millions of years, at least. Their genetic compositions seem to favour ammonia-based ecosystems. This is not a confirmation of their home, if indeed they have one. Professor Shaw, a prominent scientist on matters pertaining to the Fargoid race, speculated that their homeworld may be on the other side of our galaxy, that they could exist as a nomadic extragalactic civilization, or that the observation that the Fargoid interceptors appear to have the ability to hover in witch space could be in fact that the Fargoid origin was in fact of an extra universal nature. Their language is unknown, whether it is even vocal or of some other method. Documented first encounters with the Fargoids and human civilizations occurred in 3125, but unconfirmed reports of these vessels by fringe pilots date back to the 2810s. Between 2810 and 2840, the Galactic Cooperative 
documented a large amount of disappearances of vessels in its home region in the Pleiades Nebula. Investigations found no trace of the missing vessels, yet there was a trace of evidence to suggest the disappearances had occurred within the transit through wit space. In 2849, the first footage surfaced of one of these encounters, with one blurry image appearing to show an alien ship with the word FARG on its hull. The media immediately coined the term Fargoid. However, no conclusive proof was obtained and they faded into folklore. In 3120, new reports surfaced of what is now known as the Fargoids, octagonal shaped vessels out in the fringes of space and further hyperspace interdictions. In 3123, Galcock discovered the wreckages of two human vessels that seem to have been destroyed by non-human weaponry. In 3125, surviving pilots claim to have been dragged out of witch base by octagonal shaped vessels and attacked. It seems, although it is not 100% verified, colonists of the now redacted Velier system had encountered this race and had attacked them. The location of the Velier system is currently unknown. What is now become evident is that there was a clandestine nature of human reactions towards these encounters, with an apparent secret war being fought under the noses of the general population. Alliance Prime Minister Edmund Marm revealed information regarding INRA, who is one of the few individuals with access to surviving records of the Intergalactic Naval Reserve Arm, or INRA, who had fought a war against the Vargoids and eventually secured victory by deploying a bioweapon against the aliens. The Fargoids retreated, and for many years it was believed they had been driven to extinction. In secret, many ships were sent out to look for any trace of Fargoid presence such as the GCS Saravasti. This ship's location is linked below. The operation was labelled Project Equinox. In public, any possible information pertaining to the Fargoids was purged from the history books as common knowledge of INRA activities would likely lead to criminal prosecution of its members. For many years, no such Fargoid activity had been detected, and it appeared that the Mycoid virus had killed all Fargoid life in our galaxy. Galcor had become weakened and fractured, and Project Equinox was shut down. Unfortunately, this occurred just as the project lead Dr. Cassandra Lockhart discovered that the Fargoids had been sowing the seeds for their future return, and their warnings were ignored. The connection of the self-replicating alloy known as Meta-Alloy to the Fargoids was overlooked. As is evident from the logs of the Inra bases, this organisation appears to have captured a number of Fargoid examples such as drones, probes and ships and had experimented on them in order to find a weakness. What is also apparent is that this organisation had connections to Sirius and the club via the Turner family through the FSD. FSDs reduce travel times in hyperspace from hours to mere seconds, opening the floodgates for human exploration and expansion. Due to the machinations of the club, however, the original experimenters of Fargoid drive technology, the Alliance, did not leverage FST technology to gain superiority over the Federation and Empire. Instead, the tech fell into the hands of Sirius. For many years, humanity had forgotten the mysterious race that lurked in the depths of the void. Ignorant to their existence, the public sector spread out into once infected sectors of space in order to exploit the mineral wealth of those regions. In 3301, this changed. A discovery of an artifact which in turn would lead to the next chapter of Fargoid encounters, the Unknown Probe. First discovered around ammonia based worlds and with a chilling similarity to those who knew of the Fargoids and those which hid these facts. Little public knowledge of the purpose of these probes are known other than they emit signals through audio and that when converted to spectrographic data reveal some kind of message that was not at the time understood. Early dissections of these probes had led to self-destruction. What was apparent, however, is their biological nature. 
These devices linked with the mysterious barnacles and the meta alloys they produced via the composition of these objects. The connection between these two objects was a klaxon to the club that the Fargoids had returned. On January 5th, 3303, Commander D.P. Sayer was interdicted by what is now known as a Fargoid Interceptor. This vessel plucked the pilot from witch space, disabling his ship and scanning him before tearing a hole into the fabric of space, leaving only its untraceable wake signal as its calling card. Hyperspace interdiction is beyond the limits of human technology, so as this happened it was immediately clear to the general public that we were no longer alone. Beginning in April of the same year, a number of reports surfaced of these unknown vessels apparently attacking federal shipping lanes in the Pleiades. And although these attacks were deadly, independent pilots who did not show hostility to the Fargoid ships were not attacked. The prominent human scientist Professor Palin called on the galactic community to take samples of Fargoid weights and scans of these ships as interdictions took place that he could cross-reference them with the data he obtained from the first encounter with the Fargoids. A federal fleet seized Palin's research from Orcus Krag in Pleiades sector Oscar India Tango Charlie 3 7, but was later found to have been destroyed by the Fargoids in HIP 17044 system. In September of the same year, the Federal Navy announced that a contact with Fargoid elements in the Pleiades sector Indigo Romeo Whiskey Delta 1 55 had resulted in the destruction of a Farragut class battlecruiser with its supporting flotilla. At this point, the Federation regarded the Fargoids as hostile, and as such, a de facto state of war existed between the Federation and the Fargoids. In the same month, all-out war broke out between the human pilots in the Pleiades area and the Fargoid Vanguard with pilots fighting desperate battles with interceptors to little success. It seems that the Fargoids have adapted to human technology and human vessels in these early stages were at a distinct disadvantage. An emergency response to this was the Aegis line of AX weapons which deployed mycoid based payloads into existing weapon systems. Although not perfect, these early weapons had enough of an effect on the Fargoids to give the pilot a chance to fight back. Elements from the Federal and Imperial Navies were deployed to the region and likewise new Fargoid vessel types were encountered. The arrival of the Medusa interceptors on December 14, 3303 was accompanied by crippling attacks on three starports in the Pleiades, Titan's daughter, the Oracle, and Lehman Legacy. Over the course of 3304, the war against the Fargoid Vanguard was starting to lean on the side of victory for the Fargoids. Fargoid attacks on facilities resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. The attacks steadily moved towards the core systems and on February 15th, 3304, Gaiman Dock in 49 Arietis and Wayne Dock and 64 Arietis were hit, marking the Fargoids' arrival in the outer fringe of the heart of human civilization. As first attacks on Aegis R and D labs extended to attacks on other non-related facilities, the Fargoids pushed into the core systems in what is clear as hit and run tactics, with an as yet unclear pattern. By the time any quick reaction force could move to counter these hit and run attacks, the Fargoids were gone as quickly as they were able to hit the stations. The mastery in which base appears to play a key role in this. On March 9th, facilities called Eagle Eye were set up which used an array of six installations to intercept and analyse Fargoid transmissions. Independent pilots were able to concentrate their efforts in defence of the targeted systems and prevent many attacks from occurring. As for now, the Fargoid attacks appear to have halted. Although there is still extensive combat operations within the Pleiades and Witchhead sectors, the core systems appear to be left alone for now. As new technology rolls off the production line at an ever-increasing rate, thanks to the efforts of Ramtar and his Guardian-based weapon systems, humanity can at least hold its own against the current itinerary of the Fargoid fleet. As Fargoid vessels do not merely rely on sheer firepower, 
Humanity still struggles to combat the adverse effects that Fargoid hit and run attacks have on its presence in these sectors. One must remember that as humanity can adapt, so can the Fargoids, as we have seen with the ever menacing Fargoid bioships. For an up to date news coverage of the Fargoid War, please follow the link below to Will and Kate's gaming channel. Currently involved in the struggle to keep humanity in these regions, their coverage is great. This war will require every abled hand to offer assistance, from search and rescue pilots to hunter killer vessels. As more human pilots fall to this conflict, more are needed to take their place and hold the line against whatever new threat is awaiting us in the deepest voids of space. Thanks for the watch. Please feel free to discuss below even if you disagree. Please consider subscribing and even if you want to like as well. It all helps this channel grow. Cheers.